Okay, welcome to the Harry Potter Text Adventure Code Review. This is a kind of a code review of this game I made a long, 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 long time ago when I knew very, very little about JavaScript and I didn't know anything about object-oriented programming at the time, so you'll see that in the code. And so first let me show you what the game looks like. Okay, so it's basically it's just a one-page website. There's some images. And it's like an old school text adventure, like Zork, if you're familiar with that. And you just interact with the world basically through, uh, you know, text commands. So you can see here, you are Harry Potter. Hermione and Ron have been captured by Lord Voldemort. You need to rescue them. So press enter to begin. So it tells you where you are. You are in Dumbledore's office. It says there are a lot of old books on bookshelves. Dumbledore's desk has various items on it. There's a magic mirror in one corner and Dumbledore is sitting behind his desk. Now you'll notice over here there's a score. Uh, this is your inventory, these are the things you've picked up, and these are the directions you can move. Now in this particular case, since they're all white, that means you actually can't move in those directions. So you gotta basically kinda just solve the puzzle of the world you're in. So if you type help, it gives you a little bit of a hint. So here's some of the commands you can use. INV for inventory that tells you what you have ask, talk, or say to talk, to talk to someone. You can go like go north, go south, go east, but it's easier just to do E and S, W. You can get items, you can drop items, you need to examine things. That's really, really important. You have to guess the rest of the commands. Good luck. So I can hit enter again. So you, know, you have to think about the situation. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and ask Dumbledore. Now notice it's very, very simple. It's verb object. So, Ron and Hermione were kidnapped by Lord Voldemort. Take this magic amulet. It will glow when you get close to your friends. When you find them, say, return us. Good luck. Now, that's a really key piece of information. I've done this many, many times with my students over the years, and there's always a group that gets to the end of the game, and then they realize they didn't write down the magic word, and they've forgotten what it is. So, uh, yeah, make sure you remember that. So you can see an amulet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the amulet. And you can see how it appears over here. My score went up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and examine the amulet. It says the amulet has a large clear crystal in the center. Okay. So basically with this type of game, I've talked to Dumbledore, I found out what I gotta do, I've got the amulet, I'm done with him. Okay. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and examine the mirror. And you'll see where it says, the mirror is bigger than you and has a gold frame. There's some ancient writing on the frame. It says, to useth this mirror, saith thou Tralfaz. So, it kind of tells you. I'm going to go ahead and say Tralfaz. Okay. So, the magic mirror begins to glow. You feel yourself floating towards the mirror. You go through the mirror and find yourself on a path. You're on a path. The path goes in many different directions. To the north, you can see trees. It must be the legendary Forbidden Forest. To the south, you can see a river. And to the east is the castle of the evil Lord Voldemort. Now you can see up here, you can go north, you can go east, you can go south. Now I can actually just click on these. Okay, so you are standing by a wide, slow moving river. The river continues to the west. I'm gonna go ahead to the west. You can see the river is a little bit more narrow here. There's a lot of trash laying around. You can see a bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the bottle. I'm gonna examine the bottle. It says the bottle is old. It says Voldemort's vineyards inside. It has a note inside. Oh my gosh. So at this point, you gotta think about, okay, how am I gonna get the note? And then you say, like, get note. You can't get the note. Okay, so let's say examine note. Nothing happens. It wasn't very good programming on my part. Um, so basically, you gotta think about what would you do? You can try opening the bottle. It says you can't open the bottle. So thinking about what would you do in this case? And so I might say break bottle. And so you break the bottle and the note falls to the ground. You can see notes. So get notes. Now I have the note. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop the bottle because I don't need it anymore. Um, but uh, I do need the note. And then you can go ahead and you can read the note. You can examine the note, etc., etc. So this is what these old text adventures were like, except there was no graphics. I just added graphics because I know students would be bored with no graphics. <laughs> um, so what I want to do today was to take a look at the code part of it. And so let me go ahead and show you that. And now, as I mentioned, I made this ages and ages and ages ago. So my coding was not particularly good. Um, I didn't know 
hardly anything about CSS. I knew just enough to do some really, really basic stuff. You can see the code formatting is terrible. I'm really, really, you know, strict about that with my own students about code formatting and uh, about naming variables and things. Now, everything, what's nice, I guess, is everything is basically on one file or in one file, except for the images. Now, you'll see here, I made things about 800 by 480. Screens were smaller then, um, so I had to like, you know, magnify it or zoom in on it when I was showing it to you. And you can see, again, just, you know, you would never do this anymore. You do everything in CSS. Um, also, tables, eh, you know, tables aren't really a thing anymore either. Um, I don't I mean it works, which is important, but it's not very, very pretty. Um, you can see just some of these values are, everything's just like kind of hard coded to 800 by 480, 640 by 420. Um, and it looks nice because it's all aligned, but again, it's not really the way you want to do things. Uh, you can just see some really <laughs> just, yeah, just stuff that you would just never do anymore. Uh, in in HTML, you'd be using CSS for all of these things. Um, so, the, yeah, technology has evolved. Um, I've learned more, and at least I think I have. And this is your, this is the um, north, south, east, west part of it. So you can see on mouse over, on mouse out. And see, that's what changes all the colors and things. And then, so just it's just a bunch of nested tables. Yeah, you know, all the images are in a uh, folder called images. And just yeah, just capitalization is weird. I'm really I'm really strict about that now. I would never have I would never write some of this stuff the way I did here. Um, now this is where we actually get to the JavaScript. Um, yeah, JavaScript 1.2. I don't even know what version JavaScript is up to, but I'm pretty sure it's way past 1.2 at this point. Um, so you can just see some of this stuff is just really, really old uh, style. So there's some variables here. I guess that's okay. Uh, oh my god, I'm almost embarrassed to show this. So you can see how there are rooms in the game, there's inventory, there's items and there's stat items, which are static items. I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, so rather than you know put these things into a list or an array, um, I hard coded the numbers, and it's just yeah, it's just ugly, uh, really really ugly. Um, here it made an array for the the room array because it's basically you know if you want to go north from room one, well you can't, that's a zero. But if you're in room one, you can south is two. East takes you to room three. Um, yeah, you can see how kind of all those things work. Um, and again, just the code formatting here is atrocious. You know, if I were doing this now, I would probably, I would do something along these lines. So it's actually a bit more readable. Um, again, I would never, <laughs> I would never let my students submit code like this. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, um, let's see here. And again, same thing here. I've got a nested loop, but you can't even tell it's nested because the indenting is just completely off. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. Uh, and then here's where I created all of the room. This is basically the room array, and this is where, you know, so if you're in room one and you want to go, I think, north, you can't go because it's a zero. Um, yeah, so basically this, this is like Dumbledore's room, right? So zero 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 you can't go anywhere from Dumbledore's room also notice I uh, started with room one because the zero was being used for no room which I guess is an okay decision but uh, you can see here these rooms you can actually go up and down this one you can only go probably down this one you can probably only go up or you can go up from that room so this is basically the array that controls you know where you can move um, again, I just probably would not do things like this anymore. Um, so these are the scores. So there's some, you know, there's some puzzles in the game. So for example, you saw earlier about the note. So if you get the note, your score is five. You get five extra points for getting the note. Um, you get five points for getting the amulet, for example. You get five points for, I think, for smashing the bottle as well. So you can see there's quite a few things you have to deal with you have to figure out in the game these are the scores now what I would do now is I would create some sort of object and so like each object in the game would would have a class and so it'd be like you know 
item class item and so the item each item like when you get it would have a score if it's if you want to have a score otherwise it would be a zero um, and then I use then I use these flags um, so flags are just like you know they, they hold the state of some sort of object and again I would do this in uh, a class now as, as an object oriented style um, um, let's see here so like for example you know, when you get the bottle, initially it's closed. Um, I think once you get it and break it, the state is then broken. So depending on what its state is, you know, if it's closed, oh, there's a note inside of it, blah, blah, blah. If it's broken, then, you know, obviously there's no note inside anymore. And then here's where we have an array for items, uh, for images. Let's see, L, item L. Uh, this is location. This is, I don't even know. This is another thing I tell my students. Um, description, item, item location, item description, and item name, item image. So I have four different arrays for to, to contain all the, in, the information for each item. And again, I would do this in a class. It would just be so much easier. Again, you know, the indenting here is, is terrible. Um, and you can see here, this is where I define all of the different items. Um, so item zero is empty. Um, item one is the amulet, which we saw earlier. Item one's image is amulet.jpg. And then this is the description for that item. And when you start the game, the item is in 88. Now, I don't know why I did this, but 88 was like it didn't exist. I don't think there's. I don't think there is a room 88. I think I just used that number to represent like no place in the game uh, because like it doesn't exist until Vold or until uh, Dumbledore gives it to you. So these are again at the time. This is this was my level of coding ability. Now I got a lot of this from actually from some book. I forget what it was like 101 computer games or, or something like that. How to program an RPG. Uh, or an old school RPG, I forget what it was called. Um, so this is like really, I took like a basic program, not not basic as in simple, but the programming language basic, and I adapted it to JavaScript. Um, so again, so we've got all these different items. Again, the text, these, or sorry, this stuff is not indented correctly. God, this is horrible. Um, so <laughs> here are the static items. Now there's items, uh, which are things that you can get and not and you know, carry and that sort of thing. These are all the different things you need to get in the game. And then there are static items, which are things that you can't get. Like you can't get Dumbledore. You can't get the mirror. Um, there's a troll in the game. You can't get the troll. Um, so you can see all these different things that you interact with, but they can't be moved. They're, they're stuck in a particular location. Okay, so again, just some uh, indentation problems. Oh my God. Um, this is just some of the worst things that I've ever written. So RO is the player's room. So this is where the player is located. So when the game starts, the player is in room one. Um, again, I capitalized that, ugh. Um, I should have just typed room or player room or player location. Um, I just, yeah, the, 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 the variable names and this is horrible. Um, and then I made these keywords to see if the computer actually understands what the player is, has typed. So this is the keyword. So this would be like get bottle. Um, OK, OKW would be the object keyword. So like there'd be get bottle or something like that. So does it understand the keyword? Does it understand the object? And then the player score. So same thing here. I would probably make a player object and that player object would have a score attached to it. So here are all of the rooms. So each room has a it has an image, it has a name, uh, has a description. Uh, and you can see like, just I'm just using arrays here. This is just so bad. Um, yeah, please don't code like this. Uh, now this is our kind of our main loop. And it's not really a loop since it doesn't run unless, how do I put it? It doesn't run unless the user does something. So I wouldn't call it the main loop. Um, again, just didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so um, everybody's got to start somewhere. 
And so I'm going to go ahead and like roll, scroll down through here and just kind of indent, start fixing the indentation. Um, oh, this is just, it's, it's practically unreadable. Um, it's a long program though. Um, so basically it's, it's a text adventure. So it's really just a ton of, uh, if statements for the most part. Um, so you get the command from that part of the document. Um, and it just kind of like if you if you type like get the key, it just reduces that to get key. Um, so stuff like put on it reduces that to where because it's the same meaning. So oh my god, yeah. So this is like this separates the command into verbs and objects. And let's see again. So same thing here with this the structure. Um, this is probably the way I would go with it. Um, now you can again you can do this. Um, I just at this point, you know, I'm really a bit a bit more strict about you know how code is aligned. Um, so same thing here. Now you see there's just a ton of if statements here, where you know if this then that, which is fine. Um, but you know I would probably do this in an array now or, or something. I would do something different so I could just add stuff to it easy, more easily. Um, so when you read, it becomes examine, exa, exa, exa becomes examine. Um, this this fixes like, if the, t the user types a lowercase, it turns into an uppercase. But again, you, I'm not gonna try and fix the whole thing at this point, but like, you can just see how the, it's just the indentation's terrible. And again, this should all be, this should be like a, a loop of some sort, not like, a ton of if statements because what what if the game were ten times as big and you have a million if statements this, this is terrible um, so then here's where we basically work on the game logic so um, so it, for example I do use this means that the program understands the keyword now I have to check the object okay so if it's the amulet if I type, if I type something like use amulet um, it says you should really be more specific. How would you like to use the amulet? So it kind of deals with the different things. So if I say use the bottle, you should be more specific. If I say use the mirror, you should be more specific. Um, you know, it's kind of like the same thing over and over again. Um, these are commands that deal with certain aspects of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and tab that in. Um, so if I'm in room one and the verb is say and the object is trail fast. So this is the magic word we learned. So I understand the keyword and the object keyword. I'm gonna to go to room two and I'm gonna print the message, the magic mirror begins to glow, which you saw earlier in the game, and you get five points, okay? Now this is where I dealt with stuff like, you know, the user tries to do stuff that you can't do. So for example, if you're in room one and you try to get the magic mirror, you try lifting it, but it's too big, blah, blah, blah. Um, so there's just basically a lot of if statements in this game and oh my god this is horrible um, so I would have made I should have made a function for some of this stuff um, so you can see how if you ask say or talk Dumbledore um, he says oh hey Ron and Hermione were kidnapped by Lord Voldemort take this magic amulet um, so you can see here if item L equals 88 88 was just no location then I move that item to room one, and then you get five points. So I, yeah, you get five points. I didn't even use, I didn't even use these scores. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so they're in there, but they were never used. Um, yeah, wow, this is bad. So this is basically how the game works. Um, it just changes you know, your location, whether you understand things or not. I know what this is. Um, Oh, I did. I did do this. I did make a, a function called player has, which is an improvement. Um, but you can basically see how the game functions. Hopefully, from here, um, so you can see how we use flags uh, and things like that to determine whether or not the game works, uh, or whether or not something is in a certain condition. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna stop there. This it's just this is just it's embarrassing. Um, but you get the I hopefully just from watching this a little bit, you get the idea that you know what what kind of badly written code looks like. 
Um, it's not formatted properly. You know, you're using tons of arrays where you could be using objects, which would make your, your program much, much simpler. Um, you know, these variable names just don't really make a lot of sense in, in certain cases, like RO for room, um, which is where the player is. And just, yeah, it's just, just really, really bad. Um, a lot of this stuff should be, you know, put into functions and organized by, fu at least organized by functions. Um, yeah, that's, it's, that's about it. Um, oh my God, this is terrible. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop there. Um, as I said, this, this has been my uh, first video in like six months, so I guess I'm a little rusty, but uh, hopefully uh, you got something out of this. Uh, if you'd like to play the game, I'll put a link down below uh, to my website where you can kind of try it out. And uh, if I get, get get around to it, I'll put a link where you can actually download this and, and play with the code yourself and maybe uh, improve the game. It's it's, it's, a, it's a pretty fun, I think. Uh, my students really enjoy it. So uh, anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, keep on coding. Take care.